All right, they drew the arrows for me, so I'm going to go ahead and use their arrows. Um, I might disagree with a couple of arrows, but um, in general, if they draw the arrows, I better stick with what they got. I'm going to draw the left-hand loop. That's this loop over. Let's see if I can find my mouse. I can't find my mouse. That's great. Where's my mouse? Okay, so I'm going to do this left-hand loop right here, starting here. I'm going to go up. I got 0 equals 9 volts uh, minus I1, because I1 will be going through that resistor as well times 5 minus 4. Why minus 4? Because it runs the positive plate to the negative plate. I lose potential doing that. Uh, and then I've got uh, minus, I've got an I2 times 10. Uh, clean this up. I get 0. This is left hand loop. I get uh, 5 minus 5 I1s minus 10 I2s. I take one glance at this and realize I can take out a 5. It would make my life in some way better. Uh, minus uh, two. Uh, man, it'd be helpful if I do this right. Any little notation thing ended up doing this problem eight times. And again, a reminder: if you remember how to do your matrices, right, you could do this using a big old matrix and call it a day. Once you get your your matrix, your uh, what what the electrical engineers call meshes all written down. Uh, I'm going to do right-hand loop. Right-hand loop, I'm going to start it here where this arrow is. I'm going to whip around this way, right? So I'm going around that way. I've got 0. I'm going to go up 14. I'm going to lose an I3 times 10. I'm going to lose another 4. Because again, I'm going backwards through that battery. Uh, and then I'm going to lose an I2 times 10. I'm going to recognize that I have 0 equals 10 minus 10 i3s minus 10 i2s and hopefully i recognize i can get out of 10 pretty easily so i'm going to go ahead and do that and put them in the appropriate order okay i got two unknowns i want my third thing third thing i'm going to use is just my current my my i2 my i2 has to be equal to my i1 plus my i3 all right all right, uh, since I'm a lazy old soul, I think what I'm going to do, I'm not going to plug in I2 because I2 is going to be a mess because I've got a double here. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and say negative I3. Move the I3 to the other side for this expression. Negative I3 equals uh, I1 minus I2. Does that make sense? Right, so I'm just moving the I2 over here and the I3 over here, so I can just simply plunk it in over here. Uh, it's convenient to have it be negative because it's already negative in the problem, so I can just simply write. Oh, no, I can't simply write because my computer doesn't want to write right now. There we go. Zero equals one minus I2, which is just I2 plus I1 minus I2. So I get the lovely expression that 1 plus I1 uh, is it minus 2I2. All right. So now I have two equations. So this equation here and this equation here. So I'm going to isolate for I1 in this expression. I get I1 equals, or negative I1 equals 1 minus 2I2s. So I one equals negative one plus two i twos. It's important to be careful with those sorts of things. I plug it in here. I get zero equals. So I should have just left it negative. So I'm going to use the negative one. I'm going to use this one here. I'm going to plug it in. It's already negative. One plus one minus two i twos minus two i twos. That gives me. 0 equals 2 minus 4i2s, or i2 equals, move the negative 2 across, divide by negative 4, 0.5 amps. Now that I have that, I should be able to solve for everything else. Plunk it in over here in this corner right here. I get i1 equals negative 1 plus 2 times 0 0.1, 0 0.5. I get i1 equals 0 amps. Rut row. Well, 14's pushing on its door, 14 and 4 are pushing against it. Maybe it doesn't get anything. I'll check at the very end to see if it works. 
If it works, then it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Plug it in over here, plug I1 and I2 in over here, and I get if I oh this is negative. Negative I3. So negative I3 gives me 0 minus 0.5. So negative I3 equals negative 0.5 or I3 equals 0.5 amps. All right, so this is what I think my answers are. I'm now going to check it against reality. Okay, I'm going to start off with this loop right here, left-hand loop. I have zero current. So 9 volts minus nothing minus, I lose 4 here, so I have 5 volts left over. They say I have 0.5 going through this 10 ohm resistor that would be five more volts coming back so I, I would lose zero here lose four here lose five here that's my nine volts that's okay now let's pick another loop another loop let's do the right hand loop from here i'm going to go up 14.5 times this gives me five volts drop across this resistor here going back here i lose another four so i'm down to five volts left over i lose the same five volts through here check my mesh at the bottom i have one I have 0.5 amps going this way, I have 0 going that way, 5, 0.5 going that way, that makes sense. Last but not least, I probably should check a loop involving this middle, uh, the outside strand, right? So I did not ever even look at that. So let's see if that works. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go up 9 volts, no current, so nothing happens here. Uh, I'm going backwards against this arrow, so I'm going uphill. So 0.5 turns up, so I gain 14 volts. So I gain, sorry, I gain another 5 volts. I had 9 here, so the 5 volts here, again, 0.5 amps, but I'm going the wrong direction, right? So, I'd, again, I'm going uphill, another 5 volts, and that would give me 14 volts. Or I could start here and go this way, 14 volts. I use up uh, 5 of it here because I have to go downhill across this thing. So, it's my I3, which is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 amps times this gives me 5 volt loss across here. So, I got 9 more volts going this way. No currents here, so nothing happens there, but I lose a 9 volts going through there. It's got to be right. I don't like it, but it's got to be right. Uh, so there you are. All right, so the left side's dead. The right side's running a current. Really spooky. Spooky, spooky. All right, uh, so that's how you do this.